Yes, sir. As salamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Wa alaykum salam. Can the frequency of the live zikr played in the home have an effect on those not on this path? Will there be initial agitation? Of course, inshaAllah. <coughs> Any type of higher frequency shatters lower frequency. Ayatul Kareem when Allah say, Qul Ja'al Haqq say that when the truth comes the falsehood perishes and that falsehood by its nature zahukan. So the angelic frequency represents the presence of the truth, the Divinely truth. Nothing can hold a candle to that reality, right? There's no fake light that can be in the presence of that light, there's no dirtiness that is in the presence of that light, there's no false understanding in the presence of those lights. So the reason to bring them into our home and our home environment, to bring them into your ear, to bring them into your soul, to hear the vibration is why? They come and they shatter everything. From Ayat al-Kareem Qul Ja'al Haqq. From that Ayat al-Kareem Allah is, is giving for us your greatest weapon against falsehood is the truth. People think the truth is their words. No, the truth is not their words because the truthful servants are very few and far between. There are those of those whom they bring from their heart truthful energies through the practices that are being described. The, if you see the practices, the cleanliness, the zikrs, all of this is being described, their years of muraqabah, the years of moving through these veils. Then somebody sitting there with dirty practices, dirty being and oh they say that they talk truth, this is a truthful… No, this, that's rubbish. The path of truth is very difficult. The path of truth is, is, has an extreme amount of disciplines and hardships put upon them. As a result of their teachings, the chantings, the zikrs, the vibrations, all of that, that energy comes by its nature begins to shatter every type of falsehood. The azan shatters shaitan that he can't sit in the presence of the azan. The salah shatters shaitan, so it means anything from this haqqaiq and from these realities it has an effect on the lower frequency. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Quran by recited by anyone has an effect on the lower frequency. But when we're talking about the destruction of much higher frequencies then they're more powerful then those are going to require all of the spiritual practices and the spiritual energies so that to reach towards that reality. And when you play those zikrs and that becomes the madad of awliyaullah no doubt it brings a tremendous shattering within the home of, of negative frequencies. And that can agitate people whom didn't want to have a positive experience. That's why it's not a path that you throw onto people and fool them. So remember when we were first coming there was people who were like that, they loved to go places and throw taweezes on people like they were foolishly fooling people to round them up. It not, that's not something that's advisable. Somebody has to want to come to realities and you throw taweezes on them, put stickers all over their home without them knowing and making problems for people. Person has to want it 
otherwise they begin to disrespect those items and those practices. But as soon as they want it then that energy and that blessing is there and it has an immense amount of power, inshaAllah. Thank you Sayyidi. The analogy of the skins of an onion and electron shells of an atom really helped to understand the frequency. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Recently there was a video of an imam with a cat and it went viral. Can cats see between veils and what is the benefit of having a cat in the home? Yes the Prophet had an immense love and, and the cat has a… each animal has a reality and the cat has a very strong reality of energy and frequencies. They say that the cat and now medical science looking into it and they say, yeah actually the purring of the cat has a, an ability to heal bone density issues. So they make a very strong zikr and Allah gave them that reality. And through that zikr they're actually able to capture many negative forces. So anything negative around the house that's why you see them always looking and, and, and staring at the walls and ceilings that through their zikr they can capture things. So they, they are a cleansing in the home and Prophet had immense love for cats and animals and creatures and the sensitivity of their energies and, and the positivity of the vibration that they bring within the home inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah If Naqshbandi tariqah veils the student, are there signs we can recognize to see if we are moving up or down in the veils? You can't move down in the veil unless you're, you're hearing these talks and going and doing horrific things. So that's a sign that you'd have to understand, oh I listen to the talks that go out and do horrible things and yeah of course you'd be going down. So there's no down. It's just a matter are you ascending the way you should be? That you're listening, you're meditating, contemplating and you feel the energy, you feel the connection. The heart is, is, a, is a living organism. You feel your heart catch the energy, you feel yourself heating up. So many descriptions we've given, you know thousands of descriptions. You have to get the meditation book, you have to read the meditation book, you have to practice from the meditation book. So remember we have a curriculum that you have to study the curriculum. Imagine people coming into the course every day and just asking questions. This, these people have followed through on this course for years. That's why you have to get the, the course study, you have to get the meditation book, read it so that you understand it. And it's two years of questions and answers. So that you're practicing it and, and understanding the in and out of vibrations, connections, the connection with the shaykh and the importance of that connection inshaAllah because it's all there. So instead of… and the reason why we say it is because if somebody is truly coming new and they think, oh my god I gotta keep waiting in every week to ask a question just to get a little bit forward, no, that's uh, absolutely not, get the book. And if you're so eager there are people who read the book in two weeks and now they're, they're up to date on it and now their questioning will be much deeper because now they can implement and practice what they, they read. But if you're hoping from week to week to ask one question just to come a step further it take you lifetime. So alhamdulillah put together two years of questions and answers which we pretty much made like an encyclopedia of tafakkur and a day comes where we can't get onto the internet or the internet doesn't exist but that doesn't mean you don't have the tools, right? In your home do you have a shovel or you're waiting that things will collapse and you'll run to Home Depot and you'll find a shovel at that time or maybe they bought all the shovels. So we're not a people who are not a prepared people, what we said before proactive, reactive. Proactive is oh. I think a lot of bad things are going to happen and I'm going to go out and get my supplies now. Because when the bad thing happens are you thinking the store is waiting for you to come? 
or the water's gone. Last bad thing happened, the tissue papers were gone. Tissue paper it had nothing to do with the people dying of a cold and a flu. So the, your shovel will be gone, plastics and bags and, and uh, bug sprays and whatever you think you would need will be gone. Most likely internet will be gone, the ability to broadcast these realities will be gone. So you're gonna have what you have, if you have your books with you, you have your tasbih with you, you have some supplies with you, you should be good. You go quickly and say, what did he say about the jinn thing, what, is the past? what chapter I gotta read? <laughs> they're coming, they're coming, madad, madad. And then at that time you have your book, you start making your madad and calling out for support and inshaAllah it'll be there. So be a proactive person, not reactive because then that becomes a life of calamity, inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa How raising the vibration changes our wave reality? Your wave reality is the vibration, they're not two. <clears throat> The frequency is, is how you… the denomination of what we're calling a wave. So a wave is, a, is, a, is like your energy. So what frequency, so get on your app, frequency maker. So you put 570 megahertz, you'll see the wave of 570, right? So the frequency is what you call that in your energy classes is what will denominate the wave. So when we're saying a wave, we're saying what kind of wave? Are you making a wave that's line or you're making a, 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 sh a short wave where it's going up and down or a long wave? So what's going to determine your wave is what frequency are you now broadcasting at? Just for us to understand because it's not an electronics course, right? So if you have a low energy, <laughs> low frequency, then for example your wave is, is, is minor and maybe many negative things can come onto that wave and it's not sufficient to hit the lower frequencies and move them away. So as soon as you bring in a strong frequency of an angelic realm then for us just to understand maybe it comes in so strong that it smashes all the lower waves. So what we understand of the frequency means you have to raise the level of your frequency and your vibration so that the wave that's coming out is very strong and it has the ability like an ocean wave. Have you seen the waves of the ocean go very slow, nothing everybody can play in that water. But if it come like a tsunami it will knock everything out. So the shades they're like a tsunami, if they send out a wave they can crush everything. Or they can send out a nice where everybody can ride the wave in a peaceful manner. So we want to raise the ability of the frequency. And as a result of raising the energy and the frequency that then your wave can increase and begin to shatter the falsehood. That's why when again you turn on the zikr in the house that say there's a lot of falsehood then the shaykh's energy comes like a tsunami in the house, comes in with a huge force and begin to hit and shatter everything in that environment. Then later when everything is clean and purified that frequency doesn't have to come in that amount. It comes enough for them to enjoy the wave and the vibration that's coming in. So we have to raise our frequency to angelic frequencies. And as a result we begin to move through these veils and traverse through them inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Do we enter the grave in the dimension we leave the earth in? Barzakh is a completely different dimension. So that, that is exactly like the description that we're giving. 
If you have a cartoon book when you were a child, you wrote on let's say 500 pages, a little stick image on each page and you go But with modern day our guys know Adobe. So you illustrate on layers. Barzakh is one layer, is not the same layer that you have. Hayat al-Barzakh is a life in a different layer. So people will go to this layer to your grave, your barzakh is on a different layer. Now based on your actions, did your barzakh become a layer in which you're free? That you merely parked yourself there and Allah gave you permission, now move through all the layers. If you're of a very high reality, your barzakh layer is very open because they're already moving in and out of barzakh because they died before they died. Means they accomplish these realities into the world of light. They physically park their body but they have been moving through that dimension through all their practices. So then if they achieve this high level then as soon as they enter into the barzakh level instead of their dunya then they're already moving into that reality and all around that reality. But if somebody lived on the outer onion skin and got nowhere and now they entered into one level called the barzakh, it can be very restricted because now at that level there's all the different realities and the life of that grave. Means now accountability comes, your actions will count, everything that God will take an accounting for and did you have anything for this realm ready? So like in the world they come and say, are you studying? Say, yeah, you have to get a home one day, you have to get a job one day, you have to have a family one day. So you prepare for that day. If you don't prepare for that day then you find out, oh you can't even get a family and you can't get a home, you have no job, you have nothing prepared. So imagine then the people whom live a life without preparing for that barzakh reality where the angels will say, what did you bring here with you? Uh, nothing. So okay but there's some other stuff that you came as an unaccompanied guest with you, now you have to clean these things and then that barzakh becomes very difficult because they now have to clean all of these things. So again these are like the levels of an onion, you're going to go through all of these dimensions. That's why they're suggesting and teaching, do it now, make your practices now, make your accounting now in all your meditations, account for your character so that Allah make every moment of your meditation the 40 days of your qabr. That every minute you spend in meditation Allah will count towards the minutes of your grave because that's your accounting. So if you sit there for an hour, you sit there for an hour then think 40 days times 24 hours is how many hours? Anybody got a calculator? 40 days times 24 hours in a day is that you have to at least meditate for 960 hours, minimum to cover your 40, 40 days of seclusion. You say, Ya Rabbi no itil arba'in no ta etikaf no ta khal wa suluh wa siyam fi hadil majlis Ya Rabbin arshin adheem. I am asking and counting that in this ibadah and in my worshipness Sultanul Awliya gave us this du'a that count this towards my 40 days of the grave. And if they meditate even more power and alhamdulillah inshaAllah let's speed that process up and before you know they've accounted for their grave, their character is continuously accounting for their grave that they know they did something wrong, they're asking Allah's forgiveness. And then they go and they do good deeds and good charity and good practices so that their barzakh becomes open in life and they're moving through these, these veils and these dimensions inshaAllah. That's what it means to be proactive, not to go in the graves, I don't know what the shaykh is talking about, okay you may have a big surprise if you take your last breath. 
why would you want to do that if you're a statistician and you take statistics and, and numbers, the odds are if I'm right you should have prepared for it. And if I'm wrong at least you're going into the grave as a nice person. But if you did not prepare and I was right, well that's an eternity of suffering and difficulty. For what? Well, why would you, anyone want those kind of odds? InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh Sayyidi Wa Alaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah How do we manage the family when children all have different ideas and we are pulling in different directions, sometimes in wrongdoing? Uh, the, there has to be an Imam and the Imam has to be leading in the right doings. So same with the, the tariqah, so there's an the imam that running the group and doing good deeds. If the imam take everybody out to go do something bad, well then you're going to have a problem. There are going to be bad actions written for everybody. So the life of everyone is that they have an imam in their home and whichever spouse is going to be the imam then has to be the imam and set the course for that home. And that they try to do the good actions and the actions that are pleasing to Allah And again through the middle way, is not something extreme that they have their eight hours of worshipness, eight hours with their family, eight hours of sleep, everything is in moderation and done according to the tariqah way. So many people coming from you know other backgrounds and cultures that are very hard. So that's not a, an assumption that the tariqah way is like that, inshaAllah. So it should be something moderate and something that accommodates family. To sit and watch a movie with your family, yes because that's what they need. The, the children need that, they need familiar time. It's not that everybody sit and just pray, 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 scream at everybody and then say, everyone's going to, to Jahannam and now go, go to bed. So some people are very hard and then they, they themselves they go play on their phone. So no it's about spending family time and good and loving environment so that people raise with love and moderation. We described before and in a talk just a week ago that children they don't know what Allah is, they know what you are. If they love you and they see love within you and they have an attachment to you and you have the love of Prophet and in your heart you have the love of Allah they're going to draw near to Allah because their madad is with you. Because they love you that's madad, they're going to follow what you, what you believe, what you say, what you do. But if you're hard with people and you say, no you follow these rules and bow, they're not going to follow anything. Because they don't know Allah, they don't know Prophet, they only know you and they don't like what they see in you, they're not going to like anything. So this is a way based on love. When they love you they're following you like little ducks and when your character good they keep following you and that's the reality of madad. Same with the shaykh, he's not scaring people and forcing them to because that's why it's an open door people leave. Some people at some point they say, you know I'm mature enough now and thank you very much and I'm going back to whatever I want to go back to, you're free. If the love wasn't strong within you to keep following and you think you can do yourself, no problem because Sayyidina Nuh salam, no different, the Prophets of Allah had no difference, right? Prophet had his uncle whom he wished with all his heart would have accepted. But for Allah didn't bring it, for whatever reason Allah has between Sayyidina Muhammad said, it's not going to. Sayyidina Nuh had one son said, no thanks, I actually will go to the mountain, I will find my own mountain, thank you for your guidance. So I mean people have a free will if their heart is not filled with that love to come and accompany you and sometimes they feel themselves to, no I don't need it anymore, then they're free to not need it anymore. 
But our duty was to teach with a way of love, that come with love and the, the bond and the, the whole system of Islam that the holy companions, they loved Sayyidina Muhammad and they wished to live and die in that love and in that service. They didn't know Allah they only knew Allah when they loved Prophet and as a result of that love they all went into the fana of Allah in which Sayyidina Bilal was, was being tortured to death and, and reciting, Ahad, 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 that such a deep marifa he reached of the Ahadiyya realities from what? From his love of Prophet so this is, this is a path based on love and sincere guidance is based on who? Hidayat and wadud. So the who men, they are the men who represent the Divine Presence and Divine Love, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Is there something we can do to multiply and speed up the 960 hours? Yes, sit for hours in meditation. <laughs> yeah, this is the Grand Shaykh. We have the article on Grand Shaykh, Nawatul Arbaeen, Nawatul Ittaqaf, recite that du'a. Every moment you're about to do ibadah. So as soon as you're about to pray, Nawatul Arbaeen, Nawatul Ittaqaf, Nawatul Khalif, Surah Usiyah, Fi Hadim Mashin, that whole hour you spent in your prayer all counts towards that hour. Then you come for zikr, as soon as you leave your house with arba'een of the nitiq of the khalu sulu wa siyaf ya hadil majlis ya rabbil arsh nadeem I'm making intention. From that time all the way to the time you got home those four hours of zikr go towards that hour. You should finish that in no time, it should be all done. So that, that was Grand Shaykh, Shaykh Daghestani Sultanul Awliya's gift to the nation to make this intention, we will count it against your 40 days because they're lawyers. They'll ask Allah on your last breath that, Ya Rabbi they recited these, these recitations, count those as their chilta, as their 40 days and all their blessings and barakah and uh, immense gifts. Say even somebody who participates in Milad and Nabi with the intention of Sultanul Awliya will be dressed in nine, nine years of perfect khalwa of perfect khalwa with the presence of Sultan and awliya my Shaykh Abdul Faiz al Daghestani he said, I give that as a gift for any one of my, my lovers, my students, make a milad in that intention of my intention of what I promised to Prophet nine years of seclusion with my station will be dressed upon you. Our belief is in what the Shaykh said so that's why we do three days a week. Milad al Nabi from intention of Sultan and Awliya. And we do a grand mawlid just in case it wasn't uh, understood, then we'll do it again because <laughs> we are barakah hunters. We are not relying on ourselves and our actions, we're relying on the words of, of these huge awliya, the, the words of Sayyidina Muhammad above everyone, the words of holy companions, the words of the, the Ahlul Bayt. With Salat al-Kafar Dunub, people come and say, oh is that really going to work? Well if you trust in Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, leave it up to him salam. Then let him come to my trial and say, I followed Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq, Siddiq al-Mutlaq, my back is upon that and let him intercede alayhi salam. So this is based on love. So we hope that all these actions and all these extra actions makes our life to be extraordinary because so many people to intercede, so many people to bring their gifts that you believed in what I said and here's the gift of that. You believe this and here's the gift of that and people will be rewarded upon their belief. Now come to another person and say, I believed in none of these things and they made their life like a dark closet. They didn't believe in anything, then okay you'll be stuck with the dark closet. All of your eternity will be a dark black closet with nothing. Which one is better? InshaAllah believe and believe in Allah's generosity and the generosity of, of the Prophets, the saints, the, ah, the holy companions and Ahlul Bayt, InshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Mawlana Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa How to change a condition within ourselves 
When Allah has put us around toxic and negative people, please forgive us for bad adab. What does it matter? Why does your mind distinguish where Allah put you? Allah put you exactly where He knew He was going to put you. So it must be that you're capable of leaving extremely toxic and bad people. So everyone has that but everyone looks for an excuse, right? You come from uh, headquarters of shaitan anywhere on this earth, they're toxic and, and horrible people. But as soon as you… they found out now that these UFOs, these, these ships that fly, our technology we make an engine with combustion and we force our way through the gravity of this earth. So as a result you have a resistance from the air. So these guys can go maximum 600 miles an hour but because they're continuously in a resistance against the atmosphere, the, the fighter jets, they can't turn very fast and when they turn they'll pass out what they call their G's, 1G, 2G, 4G. If they turn too fast because there's a resistance on this earth they go unconscious and then they have to revive themselves and train for that. Then they saw that when the UFOs are coming, so we have no idea. These UFOs look like they're going 6,000 miles an hour and they make an immediate left turn. What is that? How their movement is not based on going through our gravity. They create a field of magnetic energy through the magnets within their systems that creates a, an atmosphere, makes their own gravity outside of our gravity. So they're moving resistant free in our environment. They go whoosh, they go right, they stop, they go up, they go down. Because of the system they have is has its own shield of gravity and energy. So if in life you're planning on fighting through resistance, you're not going to get anywhere. So the alien technology trying to teach these people is you have to make your own field. But that's Morakaba. When you build your energy and you build this shield of energy from the heavens, from heavenly servants that bring a magnetic force from paradise into your being and they supercharge you not from this energy. Hindus and, and Buddhists and these other practices they don't have a heavenly connection, they have no connection to Allah. They are devoid from Allah. They take the energy around them and bring it into their practices. But then you're going to have a lot of resistance because you're now using still the energy around you moving through it. So like shooting a bullet through the ocean is slowing down. But if you bring an energy that not from this energy, that's a heavenly energy and you charge your magnetic structure with that and all the iron of your body what we call juzba and fayads. These are not from dunya, they're not taking from the dunya energy and sending into your heart. You're taking from a he heavenly energy of juzbah, it's not from here. It's from all those oceans of capacity. When this energy comes from the shaykhs and they begin like a satellite reflecting to you, you're building an energy shield all around you. That's not from here. Nafasa rahma, you're breathing from your paradise reality, not from this breath. That's why their whole being when you eat and drink in their environment is completely from their paradise reality. They have a continuous shield all around them from a paradise energy. They breathe from their paradise reality. Their sustain, the ta'am they eat is from their paradise reality. So as a result they are the UFO ships, means they have a field of energy not from this gravity. The speed in which they can move is faster than the speed of thought, you can see that. Their left and right it has no limit, right? You can think of Medina, they'd be in Medina, they can think of Damascus Sharif, 
where they can think into paradise and move within that thought. So it means the whole teaching <coughs> leave the gravity of this earth. So when you're trying to change your condition, you're going to be like a regular ship and fight through this condition. Then you're going to have lot of gravity that you're going to have resistance, right? You're trying to come against all of these people to get some sort of movement or you're going to begin to seclude yourself from these people and you're going to begin to make a shield of energy and practices. And as a result of that shield and energy creates its own atmosphere and gravity and moves regardless of what's happening and that's how we describe that even they came to imprison the energy was so fierce that they move in and out of their system. They fall a wound, they step and they leave this and they step right into Damascus. Rabbi al Adawiyya, the female saint who was being abused by her husband, beaten by her husband. She went into her maqam for prayer and created her own vortex and energy. So when you go back and, and study these systems in their scientific words, in her realm the man she's with was beating her. In her, in her realm she would go into her room and begin to meditate and contemplate, contemplate until the presence of Prophet was visibly in her presence and the light of that relationship began to shield her. And when the energy was sufficient and the connection was sufficient, one day the husband woke up, when he woke up he opened the door, looked at that light and died because her condition became so powerful that that person was not in that realm and not capable of entering into that realm. Her field of energy only needed the presence of Prophet and stopped all zulumat and all oppression and he died. Means he didn't have the right to exist in that presence, finished. And as a result after that she was completely shielded and only very, very holy people could even enter into her presence and she was secluded by that reality. So I mean we have the Tazkiya Awliya, the stories of Awliyaullah, they're all portals and all energy fields that they're not taking from dunya energy. They're bringing heavenly energies and heavenly presences. That has its own, for us to understand, gravitational field that is free from dunya. And if that energy enters into this presence it can obliterate and destroy everything. So it means Allah describes these people, neither fear nor grief will come to these people. Why should they fear? If they open up, you don't see it now but people whom hearts they see, they see angels all around these ser servants and they see awliya all around those servants. You don't think if Allah was concerned for their safety that same energy would become visible means there would be shield of light all around them that anyone who looked at them would die because they're not capable of carrying, why? Kujal haq. If the level of truthful light enters into a realm for their protection, those of a lesser what Allah described them. What would happen if a lesser person looked at the real light of the shaykh if he wanted to show his light? Allah describes they will be zahukan they'd be obliterated by your light. But as a mercy Allah has veiled them, don't show that light now. But there were many awliya and they say after Nabi Musa some had to veil his eyes. If they looked into his eyes they would die. Many awliya their stories. Ahmad al-Badawi, same thing about the Sallallahu Siru. Why? Because these were all the stories of, of their muraqabah that they created such a heavenly portal that Ayat al Kareem of Qur'an became real and alive for them. That say in the presence of haqq, falsehood is perishing means that everybody is a falsehood compared to their light. Unless the sincere servants of Allah they're going to a hal because they're wanting these heavenly lights and the students they go into a hall of the lights of the shaykhs. 
But those who come with a bad intention, what happened? They shine that light and immediately everything will become zahukan. And Rabbil Adawil, exact same. Husband came to see what's going on, what's these lights? He took one look and died. We pray that Allah address us and bless us from the immensity of these realities and the immensities of what Allah gave to the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad from the blessings and the barakah of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifun wa salaam ala muslimin wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans, we have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.